My dear brothers and sisters, my dearest children, and we're happy to have you in with us today. And because of that, my khutbah will be dedicated to you. You, because you are the hope of the Muslim Ummah, you are the hope of your families. And after all, you are the generation that the Ummah is waiting for, for the change. And in my today's khutbah, I want you to walk away with two important issues. Just two points I hope that will resonate in your mind and will reflect on your life. The first one is your intention, niya in life. Second is to establish the high ambition. The Prophet ﷺ told us that no one would live alone in the hereafter until they're asked about things. Among them, عن شبابه فيما أبلاه About his youthhood, how did you use it? Because your youthhood is the prime time of your life. And shababihi fima ablah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ specifically said, and shababihi fima ablah. Now there are some of our children, we're talking about teens, we're talking about tweens, we're talking about those who are in their 30s or even 40s, because you're still considered shabab, youth. Because you have the energy, you have the power, you have the potentials. There are some of us who are living passive life, whatever life throw on them, they'll just react to it. They're not motivated, they don't, are, they're not goal-oriented in their life. And there are those who are very much focused in their life, and they are very motivated. And when you ask them, what are you working for? Whether you're a student, you're you know, getting, achieving good grades, they'll tell you, I'm working very hard to get higher grades, to be able to make it to the best university, and after that to get the best job in my life, and to become rich and enjoy my life. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you are motivated and working hard, there's nothing wrong with it. But why can't we adjust our niya to be from those who are working in their life? If you're a student still going to school and, and, and seeking the knowledge, then be from those who put in their mind that uh, the first command of Islam was given to the Prophet ﷺ was, Iqra, read. So why can't I make my niyyah of seeking the knowledge to make it for Allah Azza wa Jal? To be from those who are, will be making a difference in their life and the life of others around them. Our deen is the deen of knowledge. And there is no separation between the knowledge of the Sharia and the knowledge of the dunya because this understanding was not divided among the early generations after the Prophet ﷺ. Those who have been uh, scholars and their contribution to humanity is well known like Al-Razi and Ibn, Ibn uh, Al-Khawarizmi and uh, Ibn Jabr. Those were all scholars of Islam, of the deen, and they were also scholars of the dunya because after all Allah has just asked you to be a khalifa on the earth and you will not be able to achieve the khilafa of the earth unless you're skilled with the deen and with the dunya to be able to establish life this understanding was not known in the golden age of islam people would be striving to learn early in their life the knowledge of the deen and they will be rolling their ha their slaves and working very hard into exploring the dunya that Allah Azza have facilitated for them and they were masters and as a result of that they spread the rahmah all over the earth so this is number one let's adjust our niyyah that if I'm a student to be seeking the knowledge for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal will be making the malaika lowering their wing for me, as the Prophet Sallallahu indicated. And so that the malaika will be in my surrounding when I'm seeking the knowledge, so that I will be getting rewarded for every single moment I struggle in seeking the knowledge in my life. Number two, don't be just an average person. Exceed. إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ الْجَنَّةِ فَاسْأَلُوا الْفِرْدَوْسِ الْأَعْلَى مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet said, do not ask Allah is only for entering Al-Jannah. Rather, ask him for Al-Firdawsi Al-A'la min Al-Jannah. The highest stage of Al-Jannah. Be a person who does not settle with the less. Work very hard. I'm not asking you to be lazy and enjoy your life and enjoy your sleep. No, lose the sleep. Work very hard. But be a person who excel 
from others around him or her in her life or his life for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So you will be like the Muslim scientists who have left vivid marks in their life and the life of others around them. If it is not to Muslims, science nowadays would not have made it to the moon. It is the contribution of Muslim scientists who have made it into the science, into the medicine, into different aspects of life. So why are we left behind as Muslim now? Because we have lost focus in our life. Today, allow me to share with you a beautiful story of one of the Sahaba. This Sahaba story should be inspiring every one of us, young and old. Whether you're a child or whether you're a parent, you should be inspired with this beautiful story. Because this Sahabi was born in a very challenging environment. You heard about concentration camps, and you know what it means. It means for a group of people to be segregated in a certain geographical area, and to be treated harshly and to be deprived from the necessities of life for their beliefs. Well, the concentration camps did not happen all in Europe. It did happen in Mecca, by the way. And it happened to the Prophet ﷺ for almost three years. And the Sahaba, along with the Prophet ﷺ, were segregated in a valley that is called Sha'ib Bani Talib, in which the Sahaba were deprived from dealing with the rest of the people of Mecca. No one deals with them, no one sell them or, 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 or buy from them, or no one would be interacting with them. Let them either die or turn their belief. In that difficult moment, in these difficult circumstances, the uncle of the Prophet Al-Abbas came to the Prophet and said to him that ما أظن أم الفضل إلا حامل You know, Ya Rasulullah, I think that my wife is pregnant. And he was saying, this is not a good time to have a child. We're in a very difficult situation. We're unable to find food to eat. Because at that time, it is reported to us by uh, uh, Sa'ad al Nabi Waqas, when he said that one day I went for the, for the nature call and I heard something cracking under my feet and I found it is a, a dry skin of a sheep. So I took it, cleaned it, swacked it in water, and I ate from it for three days. They ate the leaves, they ate you know, things that are not edible to satisfy their hunger and to keep living, keep, keep themselves alive. That's how harsh the environment went. At that particular time, the Prophet ﷺ said to Al-Abbas, his uncle, to teach us optimism. Ya Allah. No matter how difficult your, your circumstances are, no matter how challenging the situations you're living in right now, you could be living in a very poor family, you could be a newcomer struggling to make your way around. You could be whatever challenges you're encountering right now. Your challenges are not even equal to the challenges the Sahaba were living in in the time of segregation in the concentration camp they were living in. Yet the Prophet ﷺ taught us to always look for the best. Look from difficulties and bring up something that will make a huge change. And then after a few months, his uncle Abbas came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, my wife gave a birth to a boy. And he called him Abdullah ibn Abbas, who become later on the Habr of the Ummah, the most knowledgeable person, scholar of the Ummah. The Prophet وسلم, himself, sharif. he put the saliva from his mouth in the mouth of the child so the first thing that came into the mouth of Abdullah was the saliva of the Prophet and he made the dua of barakah for him parents do not underestimate the power of your dua to your own children make a dua of barakah for them don't say this, yes, Ya Allah, save them, let them be happy in their life. No. Say, Ya Rabbi, I am. قَدْ نَذَرْتُ لَكَ أَوْلَادِي مُحَرَّرِينَ فَتَقَبَّلْهُمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Like what the mother of Maryam did to her own child. إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِي مُحَرَّرًا يَا رَبِّ Whatever I have in my tummy is devoted to you, Ya Rabbi, to serve your deen. 
Be like the mother of Maryam alayhi salam. Make dua from the heart. Make dua from Rabbi habli min ladunka waliya yarithuni wa yarithu min ali Yaqub wa ajalhu Rabbi radiyya. Zakaria's dua was, Ya Rabbi, I need a child not for me to please my eyes with, but to carry your deen, Ya Rabbi. Let this you be your hum. Pray to Allah Azza that will make your children excel in their life to serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't let them let's just be happy and live an average life and contentment and please your eyes only. That's not a, a, a high achievable goal. Make your dua for your children because you never know. Allah might accept your dua and you will be happy with your children in the dunya and in the akhirah. Abdullah lived after that and was from those who migrated with, their, with his mother later on to Medina. So as a child, did not spend much time with the Prophet wasallam, But he made sure that he would not lose a minute from you know, being with the Prophet wasallam. He used to serve the Prophet وسلم, in his house because his, his auntie, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, Maymuna, was his auntie. So he used to spend all his time with his auntie to serve the Prophet In one day, he brought the water of wudu to the Prophet And when the Prophet وسلم, inquired who brought this water for me, his auntie, Maymuna said to him, Ya Rasulullah, it's Abdullah ibn Abbas. Listen to what the Prophet said. Ya Allah, bless his life and wa'allimhu ta'wil. Ya Allah, teach him the knowledge, al-kitaba wal-hikmah, and wa'allimhu ta'wil. Make him from those who will be interpreting the Quran. Ya Allah. Later on, he became the most knowledgeable person about the Quran. He said, Ya Ibn Ab ya, ya Abdullah, come close to me so we can pray in, in Qiyamul Layl. Because this is what he used to do when he was in the company of the Prophet. He used to pray with him in, at night. So he lied behind the Prophet and the Prophet during his salah pushed him forward to be aligned with him. And then Abdullah would go back again. When the Salah was finished, the Prophet ﷺ looked at him and said, Ya Abdullah, why you did not pray next to me, you prayed behind me? He said to him, listen to the beautiful adab of the student in the, in the companionship of the Murabbi. He said to him, Ma kan li ya Rasulullah, it is not possible for me, Ya Rasulullah, to pray next to you and you are the Prophet of Allah at that particular moment, in the last third of the night, the Prophet ﷺ himself made another dua for, the, for Ab Ab Abdullah ibn Abbas and said, Ya Allah, teach him al-kitab wal-hikmah wa ta'wil al-ahadith. Ya Allah. Later on, when the Prophet ﷺ died, Abdullah was only 13 years old. He had taken more than enough from the Prophet ﷺ in his childhood. What should he do? He reached out to for, for one of his buddies, one of the Ansar friends, who was by his age, and said to him, why don't we go around and look and seek the knowledge of the deen? Look to the negative companion of Abdullah. And, you know, our children, our teens, do not hang around with negative people like this. Do not hang around with people who have low ambition in their life. He said to him, Ya Abdullah, do you think you're going to compete with Abu Bakr and Umar and Abu Huraira and Abdul Rahman ibn Auf? For me, I will be looking for you know a profession and keep myself busy. And Abdullah said, for me, I'm going to seek the knowledge. He said, and told us how hard he worked in collecting the knowledge of the deed of Allah Azzawajal. He said, I will be going to visit one of the Ansar to ask him about a hadith and I would knock on his door and I will be told that he is yaqeel, he is sleeping. And he would say, I would take my own rida and sleep by the footsteps. And the wind would be blowing the dust on me and when the Sahabi would wake up and come out from his home, he would find me laying on the, foot, on the footsteps and he would say, 
Oh, the cousin of the Prophet of Allah, what make you sleep on my foot, my doorsteps? And he would say to him, I came to seek the knowledge of the deen. And he said to him, if you were to send someone to me, a messenger to me, I would have come to you because you are from Ahlul Bayt. And the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, look to how he responded to him. The adab of seeking the knowledge. He said to him, we should be going to seek the knowledge. The alim should not be coming to us. Ya Allah. This determination, this humbleness, this akhlaq and manners and tazkiyah of the nafs have helped him to become later on from the scholars of the deen. In one event when he went to uh, 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 Zayd ibn al-Haritha, from the, the from to, to learn the Quran from him from Kutab al Wahi, he came to him and he held the robe of his camel and said to him, Yabna, 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 Amni Rasulillah, you should not be doing this. Uh, I should, you should not be holding, you know, and leading my camel. He said to him, This is how the, sh the student of the knowledge should be behaving. And then Zayd said to him, Show me your hand. And he kissed his hand and he said, This is how we should be showing respect to the Ahlul Bayt, to the people of the Bayt of the Prophet. That humbleness, that determination is what made Abdullah ibn Abbas later on when Umar ibn Khattab became Amir al Mu'mineen to be from the council of the Sahaba who would be consulted on difficult and challenging affairs during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. And the old Sahaba will be surprised and said, Ya Umar, we are the people of Badr and Uhud and Abdullah, the young man, is sitting with us. And he would demonstrate for them how much knowledge Abdullah has and said to them, what would you say about وَإِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Every one of the Sahaba gave an interpretation for this surah. And he looked at Ibn Abbas and said to him, What would you say, the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, And he said, This is na'i to the Prophet وسلم, This surah came to tell the Prophet that it is about the time for you to depart, Ya Rasulullah, because you have fulfilled your mission in this life. And then the Sahaba realized that this is why he is in the council of those whom Omar will be consulting about the affairs of the Muslim Ummah. Now, later on, Abdullah ibn Abbas became a, a university by himself. He will be teaching people, you know, the knowledge of the deen, one day for poetry, one day for fiqh, one day for tafsir, one day for different other sciences, and people will be coming from different parts of the Muslim ummah to seek the knowledge with, with him and from him, and they would see he is like the ocean. He is never stop. He is continuous and ever giving from the knowledge of the deen and to serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether you're young or you're old, whether you're male or female, look inside you. What can you be able to excel in, in your life? Let's start with a beautiful niyyah that Ya Rabbi, I'm from now on will be seeking the knowledge for your sake, Ya Rabbi. To get your pleasure, Ya Rabbi. And from now on, Ya Rabbi, I'm going to be working not hard, but very hard. I'm going to excel in my life, not because, Ya Rabbi, I want name and fame, but Ya Rabbi, because I want Jannah and Ardu as samawatu wal ard. And I want the story of Abdullah ibn Abbas to be in front of my own eyes all the time, whether I am a parent making continuous dua for my children, or whether I am a child, young or old or male or female, who will be inspired to make a difference, a huge difference in his or her life and the life of those who are around him. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لَكَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره 
ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم ان عبيدك ابناء عبيدك ابناء امائك نواصينا يا رب بيدك ماض يا رب فينا حكمك وعدل يا رب فينا قضاؤك نسالك الله بكل اسمه ولك سميت به نفسك انزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك بأن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا اللهم اجعله جلاء لهمومنا وأحساننا يا رب العالمين ربي هب لي حكما والحقني بالصالحين واجعل لسان ذكر في الآخرين واجعلني من ورثة جنة النعيم واغفر لوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بلون واجعلني يا ربي ممن يأتيك بقلب سليم ربي أوزع نشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأنا أعمل صالحا ترضى وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك المسلمين ربنا هب من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا المتقين إماما وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة